everyone. Uh, uh, this is a panel at the Cannes Film Festival. I, I want to start out by um, by asking each of you to give a two minute uh, background information, and I'll start with you, Andrew, and work. The way back. Well, I'm Andrew Eborn, president of Octopus TV. Um, as you know, my background is a lawyer, specialised in intellectual property, and represented lots of broadcasters, content owners, uh, big studios, um, who got me more and more involved in the business as well as the legal side. So rather than just, uh, which is the traditional American way, I know, but not certainly not done in Britain, uh, what used to happen is uh, people just instruct people as lawyers. For me, they got me more and more involved in the business. And as the business evolved in the early 2000s, people obviously looked at the digital space. And what my clients were saying is that the problem with existing platforms is they're too clunky, they don't quite follow what we need. So here's our wish list for the perfect technology platform. And so what happened, I was presented with a whole load of clients and their wish list, which was brilliant. So the great way, and probably the only way to launch a, a technology platform. It's uh, a okay. no-brainer. Okay, Harrison? Um, <laughs> thank you for that. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's thanks. a joy. Uh, uh, I'm Harrison Cordestani, I'm the president of Main Street Films. Um, I started um, almost 20 years ago in, as a, an attorney as well. Now we're all lawyers, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. And um, on this side of the table, it's the lawyer. Couch. Exactly. <laughs> um, and uh, quickly moved into foreign sales. And um, foreign sales or foreign sales? Foreign sales. Oh, uh, foreign uh, not I, not I, foreign I sales. Want you more, but <laughs> yeah. And um, and from there moved on to producing. And several years ago, um, I realized that the 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 real need in the marketplace was. Um, for the films that are out there that weren't getting theatrical U.S. distribution to really get propelled into the foreign marketplace so that they would become financially viable for all territories. So that was the thrust of the company, uh, which then be went into production and acquisition and everything else. And we started Last Can. We didn't have a film. And at this time, uh, we're uh, 12 films in. We're, we just finished a, a TV show for Amazon. We... Uh, we're in production right now in New York uh, on a project uh, with uh, James Franco and Amber Heard and several other people. So things are really moving lightning fast for the company. For, for you, D. Matt Geller. That's my street credit. That's the street credit. That's the street credit. Uh, I, I've been a development exec uh, and in distribution for years and uh, went out on my own for a couple of years and uh, now work pretty closely with Black Hanger and uh, uh, Plantation Village, looking after creative. Uh, so really deep uh, in terms of development and understanding that process from when you get a treatment to what it takes to physically put the film together. Uh, looking after um, my process is maybe somewhat different in terms of I really back into it uh, first looking at, okay, so who is going to be the distributor? Who's going to be the buyer? Uh, and if I can't list at least four buyers, it's going to be an incredible challenge to get it off the ground. Uh, and secondly, it's what are the economics behind the project? If, uh, you know, it could be the greatest script, but if the marketplace can't bear it, there's no sense of developing it. Thank you. Tammy? So I Don't we am... Just love her? Oh, you do. Absolutely. The only reason we're here. That's well, the only reason I'm here. You haven't seen my rap number yet. Okay. We've, got, we've got something going on okay. with DMAT and Andrew. So. Uh, <laughs> so I am Tamara Bell from Koan. We are a film distribution and production company. We do worldwide and domestic release. And we originally started off in television mostly, in the documentary space, and then moved to family movies and some faith-based. And then just now we've got a, a nice variety, a lot of action, sci-fi, that sort of thing. Um, we So we originally just did solely distribution, and we started realizing that we had more and more producers come to us with films that were just off. I mean, you, you've all seen those. That they films just, or film projects? Well, both. both. But, but generally, at, at that point, it was okay. finished product. Okay. And, and we would say, if only you know, they hadn't put this actor in there, because they'll never bite in Asia, or you know, if only they had done this or that. And, and so we started, we had all these buyers telling us what they wanted, so we started doing production ourselves because we kind of knew what, Isn't what they wanted. Isn't there a song that, if only is there? a moment. Okay, okay, okay. We no, haven't no, started, we haven't started the now. singing section <laughs> yet. Okay, but, okay. But, yeah. but, no, 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 no. I was just going to say we're starting a production in July. 
it's a sci-fi action kind of thing in Utah, as a matter of fact. And then we've got another one in Malaysia. So this is news for the Cannes Film Festival. Oh, is it? Breaking news. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> John? Uh, John Corser. I'm a line producer. I've worked around the world in many different places as, as a, a producer uh, in charge of the money that you guys essentially uh, eventually allocate to our projects. Uh, I've recently started developing my own projects and uh, working with uh, different people to get them financed. Uh, I sit on the Motion Picture Advisory Board in Utah to, to nice. judge which uh, films get approved for the incentive. And How come you just never get approved? Yeah, right? Yeah, that is good. <laughs> I have to excuse yeah, yeah, myself yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> on those ones. Uh, and uh, basically, I also started a, a small film fund in Utah to promote uh, films in that state. So... You also do Film Utah magazine. I also do a nonprofit that uh, promotes uh, Utah to the world. And, Utah. And, 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 and I miss saying Film Utah is also a co sponsor of these panels. I don't know if that's news to you. It's news to me. <laughs> no, no. You got your checkbook. Okay. Uh, uh, um, all right. So, so, right so, so what, what we all are really talking about and what we want to uh, talk about, many. Clients yes. become my clients because they come to me as how to develop their projects. And more importantly, in the development phase, what are the economics of dollars that you need to allocate right. towards the development phase? A and we, we got around that issue because Rudy Langless, a producer that I'm working with, uh, talked to a bunch of filmmakers in Chicago, and there was a question... You know, how much do I need? And without hesitation, he said, you're going to need twenty-five to $50,000 to bring in the right team yeah. to develop it because you're going to need... Uh, you're going to need casting. You're going to need a line producer. You're going to need to talk consulting with distribution. You're going to need... You're going to need um, all the... A casting, a yeah, casting you need director. To look at your you need to look at all of these aspects of a production. So, it's a, with me, and then we can go t to each other. It starts with the story. I, I am very story driven. Yes. The, the the story has got to grab my heart, my senses, my emotions. My, it, it has to be marketable, um, and then. I go into the, the developing by building the team. I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of great people in this business in all the areas that I just talked about. And, 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 and I believe that a good story it, with the right credible team, with the experience that these people have, it's more often they get the money for the development and also for the production. But to start out, this is film business. Yes. And to start out in this business, you're going to need, need development money of twenty-five to $50,000 or your film is not going to get out of what I call development hell. It may be slightly cheaper if you got a friend who's going to do it for free or, 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 or so stuff. $25,000 cheap. So with that <laughs> statement, yeah. I want to start out with, with John. How, how and when do you get involved in how do the people find you, and how, where are you in the development phase? Well, I first, got to talk about the the, the twenty five to fifty because I, I believe that number as well. Uh, and some uh, producers don't see themselves spending the money, yeah. so it'll take them ten to fifteen years to do that development phase, and it's you know twenty five hundred dollars a year. So uh, it's still the the, the twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. Uh, that they've put into it. It just was over a much longer time rather than throwing it into three, four, six months, something like that to, to do the, uh, the, the development. For me, I mean, I get calls all the time to do budgets. And 90% of the time, the project is not ready for a budget to be done. Uh, the, the script isn't developed enough. It, there's not enough work on the story for it even to get to a distributor to be interested. Uh, they don't have really an idea. Oh, we can shoot it for $20 million, or we can shoot it for $5 million. We're get, and they tell me what they want the budget to be. And I'm like, uh, that's the backwards way to go. we got to <laughs> see what the, uh, what the project is and then, <coughs> then start working on the budget. And then the other thing that I really uh, uh, kind of harp on as my soapbox is there's a difference between value and cost. Right. I can tell you the cost. 
you guys have to tell me the value. Uh, so it's a different uh, measurement of when you're going into doing that budget. We have to reevaluate what the costs are, cast too high, location too far, need a bigger incentive, need to do some sort of other financing package. Those things I start to look at when I talk to the producers that asked me to do a budget. Sure. Uh, Tammy, when where do they bring your company, your services in in the process? Is it a screenplay a stage, a treatment stage? A or, or what stage would a project where you would like a project to come to you, and why then? Ideally, I would like to, them to come from to me at the very beginning. Oh, and, and, and uh, that is where screenplay or just idea, even. I don't. I mean. Granted, I mean, that would be we a, got a line. for you. <laughs> <laughs> there would be a long line, maybe, of people yeah. with a million ideas. But I think just to save people time, I'm okay saying it's not going to work. So I had I'm not somebody... going to be able to pitch you on my family vacation in Cancun. No. Okay. Although, you quirky, I never know. But, <laughs> but, but, I, but I would say I had a really nice, uh, I'm not going to name the nationality, uh, a non-English speaking nationality come on my stand just the other day, had a completely foreign language film, a very kind of unknown story. They were lost, weren't they? You, they wanted, they wanted a $45 million budget. Right. And no known actors or there anything. Um, and so, I, I mean, that's the kind of person, just to be nice, I just said, you know, you probably would be better off spending your time elsewhere. But there are other oh, people... Oh, how can you say that nice? <laughs> I, I get a real job. <laughs> but there are other people who have, who have solid projects that might be going down the wrong track. If you want Meryl Streep to star in your sci-fi, uh, you know, sci-fi... Uh, channel feature, um, you might need just a little bit more direction. But, but it's, it's very basic stuff, though, isn't it? And, and the whole principle, and this is why Tammy and I spoke about this earlier, so many people miss the basics. And I think if you talk to more people at very early stages, they can tell you, look, this is pie in the sky. Right. This is realistic. We can save an absolute fortune by surrounding yourself with experts who've been there, done that, know what works. Okay, but, 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 oh, okay, okay, but before we listen. do that, we want to give everyone... Demet. I love that. Demet. <laughs> okay. I go. When or how do people approach you, and how do you evaluate from the development stage where you go from that point in time? I, I get everything from treatment to more flushed out synopsis to screenplays. And as I was saying, to me, the first it's looking at the, you know the, the economics of it. What's the matrix? Uh, who is going to distribute it? Uh, um, and really backing into it, budgets, I mean, are crucial because, you know, if, if it is a $20 million film, but it's not going to do more than $5 million worldwide, um, that's a problem. Uh, or if you have uh, attached names who mean nothing foreign-wise, and, you know, what is it, 75, 70 percent of uh, worldwide gross is international. So that's become an incredibly different business model. Uh, so it's and it, it's really understanding all the elements and one one of the biggest things I, I've always said is if you do have development dollars and it is very difficult to find development dollars but if you do have them um, be smart about it and if you are able to make you know even partial pay or play offers to actors to lock them in do it make that ten percent pay or play so now you're anchoring your project around something other than just you know words on a page. Uh, um, and then you then you can kind of start the process and talk to distributors, talk to foreign salespeople, start to get you know minimum guarantees, and really that's a way to finance it. And uh, Harrison, um, since you're basically a production and distribution company, yep. uh, think like back, yeah. uh, think back when people were pitching you the development projects, uh, if that ever was, because I want to know how they would approach someone like you in the development phase of a project, not you know, the production phase. I actually, I, have, I mean, there's so much to talk about in that. Um, I'm, you know, as, a, as a producer, distributor with a foreign sales operation, you know, I really know what we need. And we look at all the metrics of sales. We look at all the factors. We know what the film's value to us on the domestic side. We then we figure out, you know, how much of the 
foreign side is actually viable. You know, a lot of people throw numbers out, but the realistic thing is like in one market, you might only be able to hit about 30% of those numbers. Then the next market squeeze out a little bit more and then, you know, more over the next like five to 10 years. So we've got to think about all these different things. And then there's definitely two different um, lines of development uh, for us. And one started because of the other. Um, I think as a, as a young company, wanting to kind of like uh, make good with the agencies. And certainly, you know, after years, I've, I have a lot of relationships, but you got to show that you're spending money. And, you know, that puts, put us in a space where we were being reactive to the marketplace, having to wait for, you know, the go-to companies to send us the package. But by the time it got to us, I guarantee every, there's a ton of people who already passed on it, meaning the studios and then the top, top companies before us. So I have to be mindful. This is what I'm getting. And if I get it, I know that if I feel that there's something special about it, that you know it's more challenging, but I really think that we can do something with it, both internationally and domestically. But that's why we want to be proactive. We don't want to wait around you know, for agency packages. So um, as of just the last couple of months, we've started that uh, development process. And you said you know, 25 to 50. You're absolutely right, somewhere in that range, because before we started hiring our own production team, Every, every time we would start a project or we'd start uh, take an idea into script stage or anything else, it would cost about that much. Get, oh, pay that casting director, bring that production guy in to do a set of like, uh, you know, uh, schedules and budgets and everything. Then we said, why are we doing this? So we just brought everyone in. We have, so all those, all those people are in-house for us. So there's, uh, you know, and now, uh, you know, just like Tammy said, I'd like it to be as early as possible. Hopefully not an idea stage because that's still a little esoteric because you can actually t you know, take apart the script and, and say, okay, well, the th you know, third act doesn't work or yeah, it was great, but it didn't start off great or whatever it is. And then um, we have some go-to young writers and also some go-to really prestigious writers. It all depends on what we're looking for. If we want to attract a, a, you know, a top actor, you know, it depends on if it's an action or a drama or something like that. We're not going to go with a young actor who's not, I mean, a young writer who's not done anything. But, you know, we have relationships with, you know, some of the best people. And, you know, paying them a hundred grand for a polish or something so that their name's on it makes a big difference and makes the you know, top actors actually respond. So we have to take all this stuff in. But I think that, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars we're spending on that team comes down to about twenty-five to 50000 thousand or something per project because that's really what it is uh, uh andrew um do you come in in the development phase and if so how i mean how how would you provide help with your services which by, by the way are fabulous um uh, you've got to say that because it's true i know and he paid me to say that uh, um, um how how and when would you well, I, I like, rather similar to what uh, Tammy and other people were saying, to come in as early as possible. And I'll, I'll tell you why. It's two things. It's to do, first of all, with value as opposed to cost. And you're right, you have to spend time and energy, but there are ways that you can provide certain services at significantly less uh, but for a, for a piece of the action, basically. And that's why we like to get in very, very early. But also, this is a relationship business. We all deal with people that we like to deal with. We all know people who can help get projects off the ground. So we have a strategic uh, alliance, as you know, with Black Hanger Studios, who within the family can deal with everything, from the, the special effects, to the product placement, to the financing, to the studio studio facilities, to the fabulous technology, Octopus I've heard about, um, and, <laughs> and, and working on that sort of basis. So it's as much, without being patronising, which means talking down to people, uh, without being patronising about it, it, it's as much to do with the education, if you like, especially for people who are first-time filmmakers, turning around and saying, look, this is how the industry works, this is a reality check, but this is how we can help. For example, on the technology front, it's explaining what we try and do is flatten the learning curve. So many people in so many industries have jargon, which basically this clouds of cleverness, if you like. What we like to do is, if you want to switch on a light, as I said before, and you press a button and it works. What we do with Octopus is turn around and everything is picture-based. So even though, if you want to upload something that's a little arrow, you press it, it goes up. <laughs> you, guess what? If you want to download it, you can do that. Everything works intuitively. I think that's the way that you make things work. So sophistication, basically, simplicity is the new sophistication. Uh, I am pitched projects all the time and probably on pitch projects in the development phase because people know that I know really great people to provide services in this business and but but 
I'm amazed. It, and again, that's relating to me. I'm amazed that so many horrible projects come to me at a time. Uh, people have to look at their projects and, and, and look. W when I read a screenplay and I like it and I see it in my mind, I sometimes even cast it, um, and I have to do the marketable. Is this marketable? Can I sell it? Because I pitch to distributors, to line producers, to distribution, to you, to you. I'm the pitchster. How can I make it something that has value? Um, I... If I like it, yeah. I send it to people who I respect <laughs> to tell me I'm full of junk yeah. and I don't know how you could have liked this. Yeah. And the reality check sinks in and say maybe, or this is great. And by the way, we want to be part of it. So that's how I work. Well, it's also quite dangerous, though, Corky, in a way. You, you, and I presume you work on this basis. You don't send everything. Um, right, what you do, right, you act right. as a filter. So you've got a person, you know what and what you no, do. No, right. Work as a I filter for I only send out ones that I like yeah. and that I've already evaluated have some marketability yeah. that I think is good. And, and then I send it to usual suspects. Yeah, and then they ask for the rest because they know they'll be good. <laughs> yeah. I, I always ask for the uh, filmmaker to provide me coverage that they've gotten themselves from Well, some... tell them what coverage is. Well, yeah, uh, uh, somebody do a script analysis, to do a synopsis, a, 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 a uh, do consider pass uh, uh, evaluation yeah. and uh, uh, two to ten page depending and on what it is. And how much is that going to cost? Well, if you do it online, which is what I tell them to do, just because it gets them out there, sure. it's sixty to hundred bucks per per script. If you do, uh, which is one, amazing. Which you do more than one at a time, you could get a discount. Do you want to? So do you want to provide? Wanna do do you want to provide the name and the contact information for that service? If they give me a, a kickback, no. Uh, <laughs> for six hundred bucks, I, I, if you I, need I, that kickback, kick you're... no. I, I, I tell them screenplay readers is one, but there's a, a lot of them. Look That's online. There, there's there's a bunch of them that'll do that. That way, when I get the script, I already know that they've looked at it and it says pass, and they're still sending it to me. So there's something else going on here. So if they if they can at least look at some outside source that I'm not the first read of their script, because sometimes I am, and I don't have the time for that. Do you have any comment? I do. Um, I think my favorite kind of project is one where someone has spoken to me early on, kind of piqued my interest, and then gone off and done their homework. So they've gone what off and... What do homework? So they've got they've they've gotten a script, and I don't necessarily want to read every script of every project that someone presents to me, but I'd read an eight-page synopsis or something like that that would give me an idea of the feel. But when someone comes to me and says, "This is my genre, this is what a basic storyline," um, I've got so and so attached and really attached, writer, director, actor, not whatever. Not letter of intent. Not yeah, yeah. I'd like to do my it. Wish list or, or whatever. My, yeah. My, okay, yeah. Yeah. Or my gardener yeah, or my yeah. my Knows cousin's a person. gardener for so and so. Yeah. Right. So um, and I've got this person attached. I've got eighty percent of the financing and I've got some film incentive. I say you have my attention. Please sit down. Let's talk because that's someone who's actually done the work. Uh, Are you when, genre sensitive uh, in your company? This is going to sound really bad, so just know that that's not who I am. <laughs> I am, I am not genre sensitive. I'm money sensitive. Yeah. So what I think is going to make our company money? That's, I mean, personally, personally, there are some films that I would just my own personal choice. But we don't distribute them because they're just not going to make us but, but why, why money. Why does that make you sound bad? Because that's the reality. As you turn around, this is a business. So we right. shouldn't be ashamed of saying it's about the money. Right. You know, and, and that's the reality. And we know what works. We know what different ingredients. And the reality, going back to what Corky was saying, is you need all of those ingredients to make the recipe work. Right. If you're going to ask for somebody else's money, exactly. you better be aware of, exactly. of how it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, 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 and Matt, it's not embarrassing. Matt, Matt, yes. Matt, a project comes to you, and you're talking about attachments. I mean, real attachments. Not, uh, you know, my, my, my aunt is, is the maid for... But, um, is she? And, and, uh, <laughs> I, I saw that movie. There, yeah, my, that. that would be a great movie. Let's all do it. My, my aunt is a maid. Start uh, Corky. Yeah. Um, I will buy that, that film. Uh, no, I've done it. Um, We're doing the distribution. We're so uh, how do you get the talent? I mean, how do you structure that? I, I think we talked about it. a lot of it is, I mean, majority of it is relationships. And it's really, um, I, I grew up in the business from the mailroom on up. 
Um, so it is having those agency relationships. And, uh, uh, but it's more so than a relationship, it's having that trust that when you call that agent and you say, hey, look, I have this screenplay. This is what it is. This is the hook. Um, I want your client to read it. Um, I'll get a response because there's a track record, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, isn't it, is it a most so, in, in my mind, uh, it's not like I'm degrading the agency business, but in a sense, especially from our production point of view, they're in a place of not promoting their clients. They're more of a place of not losing their clients. Exactly. How do they lose their clients? By putting them in a movie that doesn't end up paying them and falls apart. Yeah. That means you didn't do your homework. So it all comes back on the trust. Right. If, if we do a movie, they're like, everyone got paid, great. Do it again, everyone got paid, great. You do it again, and then after the third, fourth time, they don't even ask. Right. They don't ask for the deposits. They don't ask for anything. They're just like they know it's well, going to happen. So. And you, you know the line: as soon as you as soon as you sign a client, the day you sign a client is the day you start losing them. Right. So I mean, that's just uh, Hollywood 101. Uh, so it it really does go back to to that trust factor that you know when you're sending something that it's got uh, it really has that meat and potatoes, but it's you really have the sales strategy worked out. You're not wasting people's time. And, 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 and in my situation, I have to know great casting mm. directors who, who I happen to work with two of the best. I mean, they're the ones that tell me, forget about it, yes. or this is something that I want. But w one thing I have to say, because it really it bothered me for years and still bothers me, under agency principle law yes. in the United States, yes. An agent must, if it's a legal obligation, to communicate an offer to the principal. Legally, they have an obligation. Never do it. You know, to do wait, you, 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 just hit, you just hit on something interesting that, uh, and I get They this can turn it down, but right. they have to tell them about I, it. I, I get this quite often where I'll get a call and, uh, from a colleague or et cetera, et cetera, and they'll say, you know, here, here's the script. I really want this person. Okay, great. And what are you prepared to offer? Well, I have 20 grand. <laughs> you're not going to get an actor worth, you know, a foreign sales value for that kind of money unless it's your best friend but, who's but, doing but, you a favor. But, but, but Matt, Matt. So it's, understand, uh, it's being uh, cognizant uh, uh, of, of that. But, but under law, under United States law, that agent has a, a legal obligation to communicate the $20,000. But, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. But if you're going to do uh, it. Uh, uh, but they don't. Yeah. And they, they, don't do it. Yeah, they can do that, right, right, but they, right. they, they can do it. Uh, so I have a client that uh, I won't name who's an actor, a, a, yes. a fairly successful I know the uh, uh, talent. It's a, Andrew, a, isn't it? It is me. <laughs> it <is okay>. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> story. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, Don't tell them about the dog. And, <laughs> and, and, and I had a client that called his agent and made an offer. Yes. And uh, the, the, the agent never got back or said, no, I'm not going to make it. it. It wasn't a 20000 but it was a nice uh, amount of change. And the, the agent said, he's not doing it. We cast the movie with another talent. My client found out about, why didn't you bring it to me? And I told him, I made an offer. My client made an offer to your agent. You never heard about it? No. He fired his agent. Mo more talent, which is the most insecure uh, people in the business, more talent has to realize that they are the principal. The agent is the agent. The agent works for and at the bequest of the principal. Absolutely. So what you said is true. You're not going to go for $20,000. But if you did, under law, that agent would have to communicate it. But say, don't take it. No, but, no, but also, a whole but it's, panel it, about yeah. about the agency business. I think we could talk about two hours about yeah, right. how the agents are, you know, that basically have the control in in the business. But but just you know? to finish on that point because it's really interesting. Because even if you offer one dollar, which is your legal oh, point, right, yeah. you have an obligation to communicate it to your client. What's interesting because lots of actors out there want to hear about it, which is your point, yeah, right. and that particular project which we were discussing earlier, um, he wanted to be involved, and it was an unusual project. It was way below uh, his pay grade, uh, but he still was desperate to be involved. What would be helpful, Corky, as well, for people watching, the zillions watching live around the world to Corky's <laughs> Corner, zillions, five? zillions, <laughs> it's got to be good. Um, what, what the penalties that agents will suffer if they don't communicate that to their clients? Uh, uh, the, well, 
from a legal standpoint, they could be sued. Yeah. And they could be sued for trouble damages, um, but they won't. Cause the, Do you know any good lawyers in America? <laughs> <laughs> there is Corky Kessler. You don't want everybody out there is making ridiculously low Right, offers. right, right. I mean, you don't want yeah. everybody right, to say, right. okay, here's $5. Here's right. And, and, right. And, and, and fill up the system with a bunch of exactly. bogus offers either. Yeah. So so we don't want to encourage people just to go out and say, hey, offer this m minimum uh, uh, to your actors. The agency system actually, you know, if you understand the system in general, the agency system works. They are a great filter. That's the point. You just have to know how to navigate it to get the right answer. But then call it something other than an agent. This is a pet peeve you have. We have to move on. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was very okay. good. Okay. Hey, and here's a new moderator. And welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's been... uh, okay, okay. I think you guys need to switch okay. seats here. Okay. So, so, it was so... a Captain Phillips moment, wasn't it? You're in there with Somali pirates. It's got to be good. So in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in the climate of so many people, and I know a couple of particular projects that have been in development hell yeah. for two and a half years, uh, with money... Yeah. Yes. to spend yes. in the development project and a good project that that everyone on this panel likes yes. how long should the process be well, as short as possible but but as, as long as necessary is the honest answer yeah, i mean i mean how de development hell uh, uh, two years is not that much of hell no. i mean as, essentially in this market trying to get something uh, put together just in the amount of time people have to meet with you it takes a while yeah. so uh, you know uh, obviously if you have something exceptional and you can package it really quickly you, that's better for you but it's you know 18 months I can imagine easy uh, putting something together. I think, uh, I think mm, people like like many in our panel are in a really unique position of being able to really test out the market. No, you know, when when we're in um, uh, places like Cannes, when you meet the buyers, they say, "Okay, well, this doesn't work anymore in my territory. This does." And when you know that from every territory, then you really get a feel. You know, okay, I shouldn't make that big horror film, I'll, I'll make a family film. But, you, but know, going, or, you know, I'll yeah. make a faith-based film. Yeah, but and, you're and, absolutely right you know, on that, though. And, and it's going back to what we said beforehand, is that the more we can disseminate that information to say, look, this is what's hot at the moment. I mean, in television, people have particular sessions with, with commissioning editors who turn around and say, we're looking for a quiz show to fill this particular time slot. This is genres which are working at the moment. This is what sells internationally. The more we can do that in the film business, the more but, helpful that know, will be I for just, people to I just got this there. call right before I got to Cannes. I'm sorry. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I, wait, before you do this, I got the five-minute horrible uh -oh. hand from the producer. I, I should speak. I have nothing <laughs> useful to say. <laughs> and Corky, I think it was a two minutes. It wasn't two minutes. <laughs> it was um, I, I got this phone call, and uh, decent enough of a screenplay. Uh, um, actor attached is just getting some traction domestically uh, in the States. And... I, I had to be very, very straightforward with uh, this person and say, look, one core thing you have to remember, that the foreign business is probably a couple, a good two years back from where we are in the States. Yeah. So this person, this actor, could be in the zeitgeist uh, uh, in America, sure. but they, they have not reached that level internationally. So that, that, that's, a, that, that's a big thing to remember. But you guys are also looking at two, four years out because it's going to be a, a six months of development, uh, uh, you know, say 30, 50 days shooting, uh, another 12 weeks of post, then, uh, you know, getting it out there. It, it's in the future that these films are going to be released. So if you're thinking about something that's hot right now, yeah. it's not hot right now. It's right. hot in that future yeah. date. Yeah, but, but you need the foreign MGs now to go into production and to make that film. And if you start to populate your, you know, your project with talent that you know, is just getting something going now, so you're, you're, you're on the client side. Okay. Is that true, Harrison? Well, I totally agree. I mean, the, the, you have to balance out those thoughts. For, for example, we did, uh, we did this great film um, uh, at the yeah, end of the so year. Great. No, really, no, 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 really great film with uh, Sam Jackson, Haley Steinfeld, uh, Jessica Alba, but it was really the younger people. It was about a young girl school putting up like these people that that no one knows i've never heard of but they're all from the disney school you know they're all got their own disney shows like dove cameron who just stole the show i mean i've never heard of dove cameron she's going to be a superstar she is. and and so that's just an example it was like you know all these people that we cast that you know 
their time's not even close, but we have to balance them along with other people that, let's say, the foreign buyers know, right. you know, right. Right. and right. people actually care about, like, Sam Jackson. It, it, like it's the, working like backwards. It's working yeah. backwards from the clients uh, and the foreign uh, clients to say that. So, so and the closing thoughts, because we got the one minute and we're done, and um, this panel is probably what every festival needs that has panels people who really talk uh, about how to move your your projects forward i um again to close out i, I want to thank film utah for co-sponsoring this panel i want to thank uh, octopus i want to thank black hanger uh, studios i want to thank um uh, Plantation Village Studios, um, and and I believe that that we should take this panel on the road, and, hosted by Corky, and, and, and charge one dollar for everyone that wants to see it. Of the, the, z of the zillions, <laughs> of the zillions that are watching. Uh, 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 all right, near you. Uh, thank you. Uh, all right, thank you. Thank you, Corky. Thank you, Hal. Thank you, Corky. Corky, your star. What a joy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Actually, that was very gallant of me. Thank you.